My oh. hair okay? Your hair is fantastic. Oh, good. It's wonderful. Is my hair okay? Your hair is just beautiful as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, as I hope some of you remember, if you tuned in before, my name's Griffin. And I am Andre. We are here again in the electrical workshop in Green Square uh, to talk all things Bauer and go into some fault finding. I can't know. believe we're here again. Two <laughs> weeks already. It's fantastic, isn't it? I felt like I've never left this position and I've just been here the whole time just waiting for the next session. That's yes. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, now, a couple of things uh, before we get started. Um, we are going to go into fault finding. The first thing we want to stress is this is not uh, go home and do it. It's not a how-to. We're just going to talk through some of our methods and safety when fault finding because obviously we're looking at stuff that's already a little bit potentially damaged. Safety is by far the biggest thing. So we, we, we're not going to teach you how to take stuff apart. We want really, you know, in, for all of these cases, I think it's it's just, if in doubt, step right yeah, back step and step walk step away. Back. Yeah, totally. Um, because of course, as we'll see with some of these things we've got as well, um, there can be live uh, copper exposed. And if you touch that, then you can have a very, very bad day. So safety, really important. Mm -hmm. Can we see those signs, um, please, what we've got there, what we have written down? Yeah, uh, of course, with safety. So when we're speaking about safety and fault finding, there's one group of products that we really have to be concerned about. And these, those are the sorts of products that get plugged into the mains socket. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're speaking about, when we're speaking about fault finding here, we're, we're speaking about, right, I've got a product in front of me. This is, it, this is, I think this is what you think it is. You've got a pro I've got a product in front of me and there's something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. It's not turning on mm -hmm. or it's uh, not behaving properly or there's, um, you know, there's, there's something wrong with it. And instead of the thing that you shouldn't do, you know, just go, oh, I, I don't like it anymore. I'm just going to throw it out and buy a new one, which we should never do because we always want to reduce and repair and that sort of stuff. How do we go about trying to find out what is what is wrong? Hmm. And you guys go through this all the time at the Bauer um, Repair Centre here, the electrical workshop mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. because um, what would you say about half of the items that you get are in working order? Because lots of people actually donate stuff to the bower. There's lots of electrical items that, that are donated to the bower. What do you think? Half the stuff you get is in working order and the other half has got something wrong with it? I, I, what, what would you say? I, no, I, I, don't, I don't know about percentages, but I, and really, at the end of the day, we would love if everything that was donated was in full working condition. We, we really, that's part of the reason why we have things like the Repair Cafe and we have our repair services. Yeah, we is good if that we try and encourage people, if they're, particularly if they are donating something, to come and get it repaired or learn a bit about it because quite often they're, they're getting rid of it because there's something there's wrong something with it. And, yes. it's, and instead of doing yes. that, they should, they, we, they should come to us I or someone else. Half, should I, of course. The thing is to get the get it repaired before you show it out. And yeah. Then, yeah. You know, but sometimes things do come through and if they if they do need something wrong, then obviously the first thing we've got to do is, is kind of have a look at it, see if it's going to be dangerous. And so that's some of the stuff that we'll go through as well. Mm -hmm. And I think what you were talking about before is with with plugging things into the mains yes that's yes. particularly something that requires we'll call it high voltage um 240 volts in australia if it has something like that on it then you have to be particularly careful because if you do run 240 volts if you do run high voltage through something and there's something that's a little bit off about it uh you know if there's something going wrong inside or even outside with the lead then you can really yeah. really cause some can damage to yourself or even more to the appliance shane can we zoom in on this label here just to reinforce this because you will find this in many of the things can you see the label there caution do not open electric shock and all that sort of stuff so that we've got two main groups of items here we've got the items that get plugged into the mains and the items that don't, the items that are, are battery driven or you recharge them mm -hmm. and, you, and you walk around with them. The, the, the thing is, we, we usually find though that the items that are battery driven um, or, you, or you recharge them and stuff, they can be quite fiddly and have lots of micro electronics in them and stuff like phones and you know voice recorders and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. And the things that um, ironically enough, the things that we find that we can repair more or we can fault find more easily are 
things that are plugged into the mains. This is the unfortunate, sometimes yeah. the unfortunate thing. And we've got a lamp here which will show a very good, very good example as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're speaking high voltage from the mains versus low voltage. There's a, there's a big difference between those two in terms of safety and, and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how are we going for time, mate? Are we, well, we're still here, are we? We just got here. Oh, did we just get here, did we? <laughs> well, we just went through our first card in the first five minutes. <laughs> So that was fantastic. We're it? extraordinarily efficient. Mm. Yes, yes, we are. Um, so we should move on to the overview of fault finding and mm -hmm. and the process that we that we go mm -hmm. we go through. Yeah. So, well, again, I think I think that the first thing is if if you're looking at something, if you know it doesn't work or you're not sure. I know a lot of people pick up stuff on the side of the road, and that's a great thing. Yes. Because often those things are, are perfectly fine. You'll often see me groveling around on the side of the road picking up stuff. But... My wife has to go out and get me. <laughs> get you from the side of the road. <laughs> yes. Um, and the stuff I've collected. <laughs> um, yeah, when, when, you're, when you're finding stuff or if you know that something's going wrong, you, you, the, the best thing you can do is, is conduct a bit of a physical check That's yes. before you get anywhere. Obviously, I, I think it's important to note that sign that Andre uh, showed before about the don't touch the live stuff. It is, it is true. There are, there are, you know, there are safety precautions in there, but on a lot of appliances, they also put that basically to make sure that people aren't yeah. fixing their stuff. I think, yeah. I think that I think so on a well. lot of items, there's, a, there's also warranty void stickers and things like that, which, uh, which come up all the time. You know, you, if you open this, you don't have a warranty anymore. If you open this, then you're going to damage it, you blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And that is not always the case. I'm not saying that you can, you can go to town inside these things, but, but it's, it's there to stop people from repairing stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We repair, you don't... Yeah, we, we repair. This is not instructional, <laughs> this is showing an overview of what the bow does within the Banger Workshop TM. Um, or something like that. So, can I go through the overview process of what I would absolutely. do at home? So if I've got something that I've found and I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I've got it in my junk bin or whatever and I, and I plug it in and it's, it's not working or whatever. Um, actually, I don't even do that. Before I actually, this is the other thing you do, before I plug in a mains appliance, especially if it's been sitting in a cupboard, mm. especially if someone has given it to me, or especially if I have, say, for instance, brought it on Gumtree or done something like that, mm -hmm. I won't plug it in. If it plugs into the mains, I won't plug it in straight away. Um, because I don't, I, you know, I've, I've got to say, I don't trust it straight away. Mm. So the first thing I do is take, give it a visual look over. So I will look to make sure that everything's in order or make sure that the cord this is um, a more modern cord thank you this is a more modern cord so you'll find that these are actually all molded together in in one they love to mold all their plastic together mm -hmm. these days so i mean they they love doing that as well because if you have a problem with this if this breaks in here for instance you know through this is mechanical wear and tear like you might be you might be actually plugging this in and taking it out a lot of times or um, last week when we were behind a cupboard that is actually up mm -hmm. against that and it's and it eventually will make the copper break inside the uh, inside the wire gee I'm really I'm learning with the way I'm communicating I must say I'm <laughs> saying all the right things um, because I didn't <laughs> I used to just go out and go, brush over these things last time um, behind the wire. Remember how I did this last in a couple of weeks ago and Shane has taught me well. Um, we, we all remember. Yeah. Mm. I take, I'll give it a, f a first look over. So I, that's the first thing we do. Give it a first look over. Especially if someone's given it to you and it's plugged into the mains. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure and, things... And I, I would say as well, I mean, although we're, we're trying not to, not to purchase too much new, but you'll find, I mean, obviously that lead is actually separate from this unit. Yes, so it is. Do you want to talk about, I mean, that's, that's obviously a, a, a fairly universal yes, cable. It, it is, yes. If, if you're, yeah, so you can see that there, there's a, a, like a figure eight, a, colloquially, a figure eight, um, and that's, you'll find that in the back of printers, in the back of CD players, in yeah. the back of all although, kinds of stuff. Although, although there's a, the IEC is more common than this though, isn't it? Is, it? it is, yeah. but and it is. Because that's got the earth in it as well, hasn't it? Um, uh, sorry, an IEC is a kettle cord. Everyone knows a kettle cord. I have so many kettle cords at home, it's just absolutely ridiculous. I have kettle cords falling out of my pockets at home. I don't know why I've got it. so many. No, no, got to show one. Have to show one. Have to. I don't care if the show is paused for yeah. a millet. Oh, yeah. 
everyone knows this kettle cord. And you can see the main difference between these two is one's three and one is one. And because of? Because the earthing point. Because of the ground is there. So you go, well, hang on, why wouldn't you have, why are some appliances got earth and the other appliances don't have earth? Isn't that dangerous? Well, yeah, it is, but um, manufacturers are made if you don't have an earth connection. And why is an earth connection important? The main reason, you know, this took me years to work out, and this is important in fault finding as well. The reason that there's an earth connection there, and one, not the one main reason, but the big reason is what they do is they connect the earth to the case of the appliance. Mm. And you know, why would they connect the earth to the case of the appliance? Because if there's a fault inside the appliance, they want that fault to to go they want a, they want that connection so instead of you getting zapped by the appliance they um they want that that fault to reach the earth go back through the thing and flip your um switch and flip your safety switches off as, as I, I never knew that i thought oh is that the earth is there just so there's a return path or something no it's a it's a safety a safety feature i i think i think earthing is something that we could talk about for yes. the whole hour, for the whole hour but yeah. <laughs> anyway but if if anyone wants to if anyone wants to know more about it feel free to ask i guess specific questions um or hit us up in the comments and we can maybe do a video yep the all the one-on-one -on -one private consultations is that is that happening today as well yeah, shane absolutely. it is we've got a and that's things in already but i think there's some free space and so that's one to four mm -hmm. right if you go to the website bower.org.au um you'll see if you go to uh repairs and workshops you'll see one-on-one -on -one private consultations and you can go and actually book a 15 minute session with one of our staff experts to have a chat about your with, yeah, you're right. with your device. And yes. how much is it? Two dollars. It's like a gold coin donation we try and make it. Thanks. No, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really just like a token donation for, for, for the bow sort of thing. It's really good. Just casually speak to somebody about what's wrong with your product and like mm -hmm. you know, a person like Griffin or myself when you speak about it. So anyway, process. I start at the very end. Sometimes, and I was telling the guys this before as well, um, lots of people use power boards. And uh, with power boards, you have, uh, uh, or even double adapters. You know, it used to be double adapters, and then it was four and six. I've got one at home that I stole from a computer rack, and it's got 18 connections. <laughs> 18 connections in it. Um, that's because I love plugging things in and electronics and that sort of stuff. But the point, basically the point is that all of these things, even outside your appliance, can Often have a problem. The amount of times that people have brought appliances in and it is a problem with their power board or a problem with their power point, even at home, yeah, you know, so their overloading yeah, circuits, yeah. Um, and it's not the appliance at all. So mm. I think, Andre, your point is just start at this end. When you're, when yes. you're starting to in inspect an item, like this is, this is obviously, this is the plug that's going into the wall or into the power board. And this is where you start, and it's so it's amazing how often. Obviously, you can you can get into more complex, you know, when you look at multimeter and stuff like that. But visual inspections of stuff like this, and looking from here all the way down the lead, because this lead interacts with the environment more than anything. It's stepped on, it gets pressed against the wall, like you yeah. Said. Mine get really grum grubby and mucky as well. I've, I've, and I've got a power board at home where one of the four is doesn't work. And do you think in five years I've put tape over it no. and said, no, no, I just got, oh, that thing again. Now, a really good way, thank you, a really good way to find, um, have, to find out, oh, I know one of these um, is working, uh, one of these is not working and the other three are good. Just go and get a lamp, turn the lamp on, just plug it in, a lamp that you know is working and find out once and, once and for all. I have... Yeah, gone through hours of fault finding and stuff just to find out that the, the, power the, power point, the problem. Yeah, power board was a problem. Yeah. So that's the first thing. So then we are going up through the cord and we're going to the other end here, which can get, which can get, um, you know, uh, well, mechanical damage at, and stuff. At this point, we've got, a, we've got a couple of little bits and pieces. Do you want, do oh, you yes, want, we yeah, have. I might as well, while we're on the cable, we can, we can show a couple of like really- Did someone say cables? <laughs> 
later, later. <laughs> <laughs> we can show a couple of really, really common faults. Now this is obviously just a piece of cable. You can see in here, that's without going into too much, that's that's your active and that's your neutral. That's your that's your everyday mains cable for plugging into the wall. How do you know which is active and neutral? Uh, so in Australia, um, and in all Australian devices now, you might find different in older stuff, but in all Australian devices you'll have brown and blue. Um, and your brown is always your active and your blue is always your neutral. And if you think about it like a circuit, it's your power is coming up the lead through the active and through the device, whatever it is, and coming back through the neutral. I same on older appliances as well? It's exactly the same process, but on older appliances they often use red and black. And the reason they stopped using them is because people, some people, are colour blind. And they can't tell the difference between red and black. Mm. So is that why that Yeah, changes? so, so yeah. between brown and blue you can always tell the difference, even if you're colour blind. And the way I, I always remember it is, if you think about it, is live, is hot is a warm colour, is brown, mm. and cool blue is where your electricity is returning. Anyway, um, that's a little bit. I actually want to show another part, if that's yeah. right, Shane, you want to bring it back in? So, uh, yes. This is just an ordinary lead, if you imagine there's a plug on one side and maybe the appliance on the other. But what you can see here, if you have a look at that, is actually a really, like right there. Oh, you can even get it. Just can we get a hand, hand behind it? Can we so give it even closer? Like that? Super there zoom. go. Beautiful. Um, so, if everyone can see that, that's actually a crimping point. So that's been where they've had like a stress release or you can make them with cable ties. And they are actually good things because they mean that you can't tug the cable out of the appliance. Mm. But, mm. this is often, you, you can see that, it's a high stress point. But that's often the first place that you'll find if you've got a break, because you can see the copper wire just inside there. If you get breaking copper wire, obviously your appliance is not going to work or it's going to work maybe intermittently. So something like this, this is what we were talking about before doing, uh, doing kind of visual inspections. If you're starting at your lead and your plug, this is a really good thing to look out for, you know, where something's been crimped or where it's been bent. And if, if it's safe, obviously not like this, but if it's safe to plug into and it looks, it looks visually okay, Often you can find, particularly with like simple circuits, you can find your fault by doing a bit of like a wiggle test. Mm. Now, obviously the first thing you do before you plug it in is you make sure that all of this lead is completely intact. You don't want anything, I think we've got a couple of others where... Where's the one that was exposed, Griff? Um, Did I have it over here? I don't know where you had it. Here, this guy. Ah, oh, this guy here, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to go through that one? Yeah. So um, that's the next step. You know, j just back really quickly to, to that one was that I... This is a compromise for manufacturers. It really is. Mm. Because you have to have um, a tie point, um, a point where you're... Um, to, to reduce uh, reduce stress. Yeah. So that they have to crimp this in here, in the product, to make sure that this isn't loose and pulling around because it will just come out of the appliance eventually after a few uses but they also know they also know that they're damaging and weakening their cord yeah but it's more important for them to make sure that co that cord is held onto and what their hope is that that cord will be there will be held onto and it will never be you know, it will never be taken off. Mm -hmm. But once it is taken off, I mean, I, there's no way I would use that again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. And so here's quickly. Let's take a look at the other one here. Here is um, a cord, uh, obviously a mains cord. Here is a mains cord that uh, had a problem. And as you can see here, of a Griffin or somebody or Bob or somebody uh, in the uh, in the store went through and you can see that this was actually blown inside it. Blown inside the cord. Yeah. It was actually blown inside the cord. Isn't that amazing? I wouldn't have, I really wouldn't have thought. I've got to say this is a, would you call this a rare fault? Where the cord itself here blows? I, Why did it blow inside the cord because there? It, because it's an arcing point. It, you know, it must have had some sort of damage or, or mechanical... Yeah. So after it damages, and yeah. I think I do, we can talk quickly about maybe arcing, uh, electricity yes. arcing, yes, because certainly. that's yep. why this happened as well. Um, 
Oh, so, man. This is terrible. <laughs> um, can, we, can we show this as well, please? So, yeah. If I take this out now, if you found something like this, on an extension cord that you were using, or a cord for an appliance, actually you'd only find this really on an extension cord. Mm -hmm. um, would you plug that in? Well, Something yeah. into that? <laughs> no, absolutely not, because this is this is very dangerous. This is actually exposing the copper of uh, of the actual the mains 240 volts, uh, and uh, the reason why these are so thin is so little kids and you can't get your fingers inside them. But here, I mean, I can virtually just touch that now as well. It's not plugged in, is it? No. Remember, if you're looking at any of this, never have any of this plugged in, ever, unless you know exactly what you were doing. Very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, and then, was this, did this actually come with this? No? No, but it's... Because this has got an arcing point on it here as well. Mm -hmm. So anyway, another fault, another fault. So with the cords, can you sum up like what you do with them and how you find those faults? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've jumped around between and you've yeah, shown us some things. Yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah Thanks sure. for saying that. <laughs> Good. He's talking. Positive feedback. Is yes. Beautiful. Um, I, th I think. What when, do you think? Well, when you're looking at mains voltage like this, I think the important thing, the first thing you can do is is basically almost get it in your in your hands and have a look, run your hands down it, look for any kinks, anything that looks strange, anything if there's any, uh, you know, burning powder, or if there's fraying any, or if something there's any like liquid, that. Yep. You, you just, you, I, I think that's the first thing you can do before you even yep. look at the appliance itself. Yep. And, w and even when you're looking at like integrated, like a uh, integrated uh, cable, like on lamps, you know, that, that again, you just start at the plug and you move your way up. Yeah. We're talking about just a phys physical inspection. We're not looking at if there's anything going wrong inside it, but this is your first point, and this is what we do every single time. And if you've looked at that and that all looks really good, but you still suspect it's the plug somewhere, for instance, that had an arcing point inside it and we couldn't see it, mm -hmm. we then go on to use, of course, a multimeter. Can we multimeter this? out just to show the three beeps yeah of course is that okay of course i think that's good um, um we will be having uh more videos on the multimeter uh so anyone that's uh not quite sure what it does basically at this point it's rop ant <laughs> sorry i just killed an ant don't announce oh, actually, no, i didn't tell the public i brushed it off <laughs> right can we come in here please can we come in here please i'm getting all all, all, all all bossy now. Like um, back here, basically, this multimeter is going to show. That is it? Oh no! Is it? Is it good where I am here, Shane? Yeah. This multimeter is going to show. Probably. That, hopefully, that the copper inside, like I showed you before, the brown and the blue leads. Okay. No. That though no. is basically creating a circuit, and it'll beep if Your it hand has. Is in the, where the screen. Yeah, No. Ah, I'm not in BP mode. Oh, I'm going to BP mode. There Where's we go. BP mode? There it is. Okay, so here I have it in, I've got it in the ground. I've got one of these leads in the ground. And this this will beep if there is good electrical flow through here. So no, that's good. You wouldn't want those connected. No, and beep. So we know that bottom one is good. Take and it's important if you are using multimeter like this to test all three of those leads because you don't want any crossover at any point. Like no. what you did, you tested the yes. active. There you go. Yep, yep. Oh, oh. What's going on there? It's interesting. So there we go, we've got an intermittent fault. Yeah, that's and intermittent. That, look, that, and look at the multimeter. Oh, that's really bad. And and it's that bad one there as well. There what does go. that mean? Um, so what that means, is, I suspect what that means is there's plenty of copper showing here and I've got this end of the of the thing of the multimeter this probe plugged deep into that copper because there's heaps of copper to, to have but it was still intermittent it was still beeping and then turning off mm -hmm. I think because this is corroded and it's arced and it's got powder on it or something like mm -hmm. that I think that there is still um, good copper between these two I think but that uh, the connection um, is is bad hmm. here where, I, where I'm trying to test it. I think that um, well, well either there's an electrical fault or there's a there's a corrosion mm -hmm. um, blocking the electricity from coming through. Mm -hmm. So that is um, yeah that's bad. So we beep it out. 
um, and then we still find out there's another uh, there's another fault. Now, when you can see these see these ones here that have these that have oh, these fantastic. screws on them. Yeah. I love them. I got lots of these at home. So of course you have the these are the ones where you can't you can't change anything with these ones here. These are all molded that you call plastic. A, a molded plug. A, a molded plug, yeah. And lots of kettle cords are like that, and they're very safe because they mold it all in one. They make sure there's no way that anyone can be can be zapped by that. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice on and especially on older ones, and sometimes you go into a hardware store, they'll have these as mm. they'll have these ones as well. There's actually um, a, a screw sleeve here, and I, I won't do. I won't take it apart. But you can actually see. Can you come in here? Shane, hmm. do you see the clearness in there? This is a this is um, a fault, an actual fault finding measure for you as well. Hmm. It's actually a clear plastic mould to show you, and you can look right in at the connections to show you whether those connections are still in good order and whether they've blown or whether mm -hmm. they've whether they've come apart. And you can change these, can't you? Ooh. In the bower. Legally, I'm not actually. Oh, you can look. What I will say, what I will say is that you can uh, officially, legally, you are supposed to have a plug changing certificate. Um, however, you can purchase them at any hardware store, and you can, t you can't purchase them apparently. You can. I wouldn't <laughs> go about recommending anyone to okay. do it. You can, you can purchase them, and you can get an electrician mm. or a repair person to do it for you. Uh, if you're in, if you're in. Debt. Only we can purchase purchase them. Yes. They ask you ten questions. <laughs> they ask you about multimeters and ohms and in the restricted section in Bunnings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> oh, that's good. Right. Do you want to move on to a bigger item? Maybe something that shows a yeah. switch fault. This is. This is. I mean, it's it's absolutely had it. It's and beautiful. it's scary. It's beautiful as well. Yeah. And it's scary, and if you plug this in, it would be a major hazard to your life. <laughs> yes. Um, so again, you want to start at the plug and maybe go yes. through this? So we have a lamp, and this has been this has been driven into the bower, uh, of course. And something like this, it's, which is so solid and lovely, is worth. It's actually in here as a paid repair. Oh, is it for a paid? Is it for a paid repair? Yeah. yeah so this came this came in as a paid repair. Um, oh, sorry. So for the person that brought this in, hello, we're about to use your thing in our show. <laughs> um, I hope you're watching. Yes. So this is this came in. Uh, someone has obviously had a lot of fun with it. It looks like often often things like uh, these are auction purchases. You know, it's like a nice, it's an older collectible ah. lamp. But quite often they need a lot of work and a lot of servicing. And particularly with things like lamps, they're pretty easy to to. Redo. You don't I need love a lot this. Of Can we just say that? Nah, we couldn't do it. No, I'm just. I love like it. if they are watching, then we're screwed. Anyway, do you want to start at the plug? Yes. So we get this. Well, the first thing that we do is when and when this comes in is we look at the whole thing mm -hmm. over and we go, oh yeah, the guts are hanging out. So we know there's a problem. Um, and yeah, However, and there's some other things up here as well, and we know not to plug this in. Do not plug this in because you've got a whole lot of exposed wires here. It's very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So let's start the plug. Um, can we take a look at this? Because we're doing this live right now to take a look. And Griff, straight away... Oh yeah, wow. So, I mean, there's a couple of things wrong. <laughs> Obviously, you never want to be able to... This is one of the, this is one of the downsides of having these replaceable plugs is that because someone's put them on, it's not a one molded piece of plastic, you can get stuff like this happen. And you can see that the sheath is coming free. And if you can ever see color, you can see also, by the way, what I spoke about before, that the actual colors in there are not Australian regulation. They're not blue and green. No, they're not. They're black, red, and green, which is, you know, just add, a, add another layer. So it's from another country, do you suspect? No, it's just old. Ah, oh, of course. So it's not from another country because this is the Australian plug. How could it be from another country? <laughs> oh, oh, it could have been. This could have been from another country, and they anyway. Right. So we know for a start here, there's possibly a problem in here, and you don't want to have those wires exposed there because you always want double insulation with the mains. You want to have this insulation and this insulation on there all the time. So, so that's a problem. Even even though we have the entrails of the lamp hanging out, that is the first place. If you were to repair it, and that's the first thing that we're going to do, 
when we go through to repair this, the first thing we do is change that plug, put a new one on, or you know, put one on that, that is fitted properly. The plug actually itself looks okay, but it needs refitting, because that sheath is, is not containing the wires properly. Um, so we move our way along the cable, we check that cable after the plug is, is replaced. We move our way up here to, and you can see there's two different lamps. Are you gonna hit it with the? Yeah, I'm gonna hit it with the thing, and they split they split the power into at this. Let's take a look at what they actually do in here because you have to do this properly. So what they have to do is they have to bring the power in and here's the power coming in here. Mm -hmm. And you can't just do um, something silly like just, you know, solder two bits of wire off. You have to have all this secured properly. So, Andre, I, w I would say before before we use the multimeter, and the mul multimeter is great because it's yes. not high voltage, so we can test. With oh, yeah, we're looking. The best oh, we're still inspecting, it. aren't we? But if we were doing a full visual inspection, Shane's gone full rogue with the camera. If we were doing a full inspection, oh, oh. we'll start to look through here, and this is one of the that really, doesn't look good. It's one of the really really common symptoms of of uh, uh, particularly a faulty mains. Sorry. What are you looking at here? We're is looking it? at okay. the back of the switch, which fits onto, uh, oh, fits into, oh, the, oh, fits 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 into, into the, the back, back of, of one of these. No, it fits into here. What on the switch are we looking at? Yeah. Um, so we're looking at the back of the switch and look at the, look at the black corrosion in there. Something has been arcing terribly to make yeah. that, that black. So this is and look at the black in here. That's something oh. that happens so commonly with plastic switches is if there's a small connection, basically we keep using the word arcing and I think just to explain quickly what arcing is, it's basically when there's not, if you imagine if the, if, uh, the two pieces of copper, you know, when they're, when they're linked really well together, then the electricity can flow through it really, really beautifully. There's no resistance, there's no issues with it. Arcing is what happens if there's maybe some fraying in the copper wire or if there's a very short gap. The electricity is still taking the point of least resistance. So it's trying to jump that gap from... And it can, because it's 240 it volts. But It what, breaks down the air, actually. We have a, a question from, from someone. You were about to say something about if you can ever see the colour in a cord. And yeah, you didn't quite finish that one. You got oh, interrupted. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, just basically, if you can ever see the colours in a cord, like Andre said, there's two layers of sheathing on on of of uh, cable on all power cords. You cannot buy anything that doesn't have two layers. And yeah. the outer layer double is usually, insulation. The outer layer is usually like a boring black or a grey or whatever. And then the inside is always marked. And like I said, it's not always the Australian standard, but it should be blue and brown and potentially a green and yellow for, for the earth. There should be either two or three cables. And if you can ever see that color inside there, then you really need to look at getting it replaced or getting it repaired. Because that is just, a, it's, it's an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. That means that that cable has already been stressed, that plug has already been stressed, and you need to look into it. Yeah. It may not be causing a problem yet, but it's the first obvious symptom so th this person has a has a cord where they can see those two colors okay. right at the end. What okay. Would you... I, w I would definitely suggest, um, I mean, bringing in for a paid repair here, or you can uh, do a one-on-one -on -one session and, and we can kind of talk about options. Uh, we're not going to get you to do it. I, th I would say probably the best is paid repair. Bring it in here. It's a cheap repair. It doesn't take long, but it's definitely the first thing you want to do. Yep. You, yeah. You know, you, you don't want to risk it. Um, to go back to what we were just saying before, that is the first sign that something is going to start stressing, is going to start arcing, or there's going to be some damage inside there. I, it, it, again, it can work. It can work perfectly well while that's happening, but yeah. you just know. It's and I've left cords in this condition as How well dare you? for, for, you for don't a long tell time. People that. I have. I have. But it was in my. It was when I was a teenager. Disgusted. It was in my twenties. <laughs> I'm disgusted with you. Anyway. <laughs> It was when you were a teenager in your twenties. <laughs> <laughs> I was a strange, oh, I was a strange youth. <laughs> oh. Right, so we've done that. We know there's a problem there. Understood. We've had a visual. Yes, we've got blackness on the back of the switch here. Mm -hmm. We know that's a problem. Um, we know that because they have to split the power, the mains power, into two separate lamps here. They've got uh, an insert here. Only one of the lamps has a switch on the back of it, and that's this one here. So this goes back inside this lamp this way there's the globe mm -hmm. 
for this guy here and the switch is then put onto the back like this and the guts of this is all has all been taken out so there it is. that's how it lines up in that lamp there mm -hmm. and so they're using this lamp fixture here inside it to make and they're using a, a little block here where the cord comes in and it splits out into two one lamp and the other lamp and then they've got a switch on mm -hmm. it here so obviously we're not we're not going to we're not going to repair the switch or, repl or we're, it's not repairable it would be a replace the switch here um, we're not going to do that today but if we were to then fix this that's kind of the next problem that we're going to come across where would you go after that if you were fault finding this thing i mean well that's yeah the well um, for, for a lamp of this age as well and anything that has globes in it mm. i would take a very good look at these at these fixtures as well so what's what's inside there and there's two of them well inside here is um this is a bayonet fixture did i say bayonet you did there's a bulb right there ah huh just to show people, because it's outside the lamp, just to give people an idea of what we're looking at. Yeah, that, that's a, you, you, everyone knows what a bayonet, and what's the other one is a screw. Edison screw. Edison screw, there yes. you go. Yes. Yep. And they don't really make them like this anymore, but this is made out of a ceramic mm. here. I love it. I love seeing ceramic, but invariably these are, they, well, invariably, but they are, they're damaged quite a lot sometimes, aren't they, in, mm -hmm. the, in the ceramic. And what you'll find is, uh, because the ceramic itself is formed and it is the one the ceramic form in here is the one that has to grab hold of that bayonets that you know constant taking in or out or if you if it's been given a whack or it's cracked or something like that you will find that these globes don't stay in anymore um, and so it's really unfortunate um, so you have a good look at those but these two these two look fantastic. I just love that these two, <laughs> that these two ceramic why, why holders. Do, why do they use ceramic? Um, they used to use they used to use ceramic because uh, because a it doesn't conduct electricity, mm -hmm. uh, and so when you're putting it in, it's not going to cool. electrocute you. So what and you the heat capacity of them as well because mm -hmm. because lamps get very hot. So what would you what would you be looking for inside that web? Because not all of them are ceramic. Some of them are yep. plastic. Yep. You know, some of them are, you, you see the more modern ones. Most of them would yep. be plastic or br like brass. Yep. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what would you be looking at in there? For but those for, terminals. Yeah, for a bayonet setting, you'll see that there's um, there's an outside here, and then there's two terminals here. Mm -hmm. There's two pogo pins in there. Pogo pins. Yeah. There's two, uh, oh yeah, we're doing fault finding. I, this is yeah, fault finding. This is fault finding. <laughs> we had to remind to remind us of doing fault finding. So we're doing fault finding on the lamp. So one of the things to look when you're looking for a fault is to um, is to take a look at those um, take a look at those pins there as well. So yeah, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at those attachments. We're going to get our um, multimeter. We're going to buzz this out to see if all of the if all the lines should we buzz it out or not. I think we could do that quickly. Yeah, could we quickly if do you that? want to show particularly something we've already walked through, like we know that that switch doesn't work. Maybe, yeah, well, know, maybe that's something. Maybe to show. maybe it does. Maybe it does. Maybe it's intermittent. Um, what well, the Please, first the first thing I want to do though, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put my multimeter on beep beep mode. The the machine that goes beep, not the machine that goes ping. Uh, and I'm going to, and remember with the multimeter, you want to hear the beep. If you hear the beep, it means you've got good continuity between those two, between those two points. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go from the earth here for a start, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to follow this along, and where's our earth? It should be, really, this whole thing should be earth. And it is. There you go, that's good. That's, that's exactly what we yeah. wanted to hear. Uh, and how did I know that that whole brace was going to be earth? Because that's just what manufacturers do. They get the, the earth connection. And as I said with the other thing here, you must connect your earth if you've got a, a metal chassis and you're using the earth. You connect it to your chassis. So it's uh, the whole thing um, is earth. So if there's a fault, it will touch that and flip your box at the front of the house. That's, that's what it does. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the other two connections here. I'm just going to be... So now you're testing active. Out. Yeah, active. So you'd be looking How do you know I'm testing active? Oh, I'm on that side, yes. Oh, I know you the other one. You're testing passive. Am I? Yes, I am testing passive. And that's right. All this is testing is this cord here, by the way. And yes, we're getting very specific, specific here. 
I feel this is this is often the problem with with the, uh, you know starting to look at electrical repair is that yep. it's just it branches. It branches there are out. so many different things. And again, yep. if you if you want to comment or tell us what you want to hear, we can go into more specific kind of things yeah. down if, the track. If you were to sum up what the the main types of faults were mm. in an electrical appliance, what would you say that they are? Like if if you're starting an electrical appliance, what would you say like the top three types of things that could be going wrong in that world? I, I would put uh, at the very top, it's funny because um, I, I want to say mechanical and electrical, but the thing is that a mechanical fault leads to an electrical fault. Mm. Um, so usually when we're saying mechanical and electrical, if I say mechanical or electrical, mechanical really means this ball joint is gone. Nothing to do with electricity, this ball joint is gone and electricity is the electricity. But when we're, if we're just speaking about electrical fault finding and electrical faults. Um, I think we're talking about faults in electrical items. In electrical mm. items, So that yeah. what you're saying is that that mechanical fault, which has nothing to do with the circuit inside, will eventually lead to... Yeah, it may do. An electrical uh, fault. Yeah, electrical fault, yeah. So um, if you had a grinder, you could have a gear in there being physically broken yes, versus... Uh, yes, versus the electrical, versus the engine, the electrical engine itself a having a blowout or a wire, yeah. Mm. That's so, really interesting. So that's the first, that's the first thing. Yeah. Um, and then I always in my head have got high voltage and low voltage group things grouped things that plug into the. the and how does that impact what the faults could be? Um, um, when you have something that plugs into the mains, you you would never get look at the look at the blackening on the back of, on the back mm. of this. It's amazing. You will never see something like this in a battery operated appliance, even up to 9 volts in volt. You might think you see something like this, but it won't be. It'll be corrosion, or it'll be the battery leaking, or it'll be something like that. Mm. In mains appliances, um, you get things like this happening. You get arcs, you get... Because um, the get, energy is Because the energy is so much higher. I mean, yeah. we're speaking 240 volts, 10 amps, 24,000 watts. So if it's battery power, then arcing... 2,400 watts. Really 100. Uh, no, no, not at all. If it's battery powered, arcing is not an issue. So immediately that's passed yeah. out. Unless, unless it's like a car battery. Cool. Because car batteries have got a lot of oomph behind them. But if you're mm. speaking about AA batteries or, you know, 3.6 volt rechargeable batteries mm. um, or 9 volt batteries and that sort of stuff, not even if the battery is really full, you don't generally get arcing. There's one caveat on that. There's a, there's a component called a capacitor. Uh, and th and that is in and that can be in um, items and you can even have the capacitor in low voltage items but capacitors are able to hold a really big charge mm. uh, and even with batteries uh, you can make a capacitor if you set it up properly and you can do voltage doubling you can try and get all the energy out of that battery and arc it over but generally no so that's that's the main thing there we're speaking about yeah, the main things have got much more volatile, much more arky um, sort of uh, problems, and you have to really watch out for you know seeing but, uh, things but like that. Because of because of that, they are actually easier to diagnose. Because, yes, because the because the problems are more obvious and the circuits generally are more like simple. Yeah, they're so much easier to be able to do a physical inspection, kind of like we're doing now. And, and walk through and go, there's clearly an issue there, yeah. there's clearly an issue Whereas well, a USB, I can't stand USBs <laughs> because you don't know what's wrong with them. With that, what you were saying before, there's clearly an issue here and there's clearly an issue here. Mm. What would those clearly be? I would say the things that we found already on this lamp are by far the most common. You start looking at this plug, any, any coloured cable, if there's any high stress points, if you see any, like you can see here, there's a lot of corrosion. What mm. you want, to, I mean, yeah. what you basically want is, if you're thinking about, you want contact. You want really clean contact. So anything that's on there, you can see there's a lot of burn there. And there's actually some corrosion as well. I mean, anything like that is going to interrupt the, uh, I guess, yeah, in, in, interrupt the, the, yeah. yeah. So would you say you start with so. You, you're going to start with a visual inspection of all the components first mm -hmm. before yep. you before you even go to that multimeter mm -hmm. yes. setup. Yes. Yeah. So you kind of break it down. If you you know you check the mechanical aspects, then you check the electrical aspects. Mm -hmm. Then yes. you do a visual inspection. You're looking for exposed wires. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk through like what your steps would be? 
and that sort of thing. Like if you were to approach this without looking at it, like like I was just saying, you yes. break down beyond that. So you check the mechanical and electrical, then you do your visual. What are your steps after that? Uh, you know, it really depends on the item. If you have a simpler item like this, where there's a very obvious flow of electricity. So there's a super obvious flow of electricity here from the mains through to the thing that, that provides electricity for both the lights into this and into the switch. So if you have something like this, and it's the same for a kettle, uh, it's the same for, pretty much the same for a toaster, pretty much the same for that. So if it's something that doesn't have microelectronics in it, like a, like a board, mm. I would follow, follow the money, follow the electricity. So mm. trace it along. Yeah. So we, uh, as we're doing, we start from here, we go in, and I look right, where does this cord first connect in here? Where's the mm. very first connection? Yeah. And I take a look at that connection. Right, where does it come out? Here, and I take a look at that connection. And you actually follow the connection along, yeah, in step by step by step, mm. until it ends up exiting again, and you've gone through the whole thing. So then, what that also gives you is an overview in your mind of exactly how the electricity is distributed in the item well, as it's well. In it's interesting because in a lot of older items, I mean, people probably would have seen in older items, you, you generally have a piece of, uh, like a label in, inside, sometimes even outside, which had a circuit diagram. And that, yes. I mean, it's, oh. it's a bit of language. Circuit diagrams. <laughs> It's 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 a bit of language to, to understand, you know. It, it does it does require a little bit of, of uh, you know comprehension. You need to know what it's it's showing you. But but once you understand what that shows you, it is giving you a really clear understanding of where the flow of electricity is going. So you can follow through. And in terms of fault finding, things like like uh, circuit diagrams, which are no longer provided, by the way. They are not provided in no, appliances. No, they used to be. In wow. very rare, I would say 1% of appliances would have a, would have a, a circuit diagram. Um, certainly not on the actual appliance. You might be able to find them somewhere on yep. the net, yep. but basically, unlike where most stuff would have it sitting there, um, you know, and, and actually, beautiful segue right now. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. Um, particularly in audio gear, oh. <laughs> um, particularly in audio gear, circuit diagrams, uh, I mean, you would find them on ev inside every radio, inside yeah. every record player. Oh. And to, to oh. understand the step by step, if you're going from this point to that point, it just makes it so much easier. It does. Audio gear. Audio gear. Um, I love audio gear. Now, there's an extra couple of elements, because obviously audio is sound and that's yes. often the first thing that you'll hear if you bring you know and we, I get mm. we get them so often you, you know, speakers that are a little bit off or are not working in the right way mm. can I just give you a quick overview of what an audio person thinks about when they're looking at audio gear like a person's yes. really involved in audio Please. they think in terms of the audio the audio flow even when they're speaking of, even when they're thinking about the fault finding they're thinking of the input where's which is called the source mm -hmm. where the source comes from mm -hmm. Um, they're, then they're thinking about the, um, the first thing, um, which is sometimes a converter. It's mm -hmm. going to keep it as analog sound or it's going to change it into digital. Okay. Um, then they're thinking of things called preamplifiers. Um, and this is in this is in inside the um, the actual case. You can actually have you can see the converter. You can see the preamplifier. And then you've got the main amplifier to amplify the sounds. Then you've got the output. There's an output section, Going which, to um, uh, which then goes to the actual um, audio outputs at the back of the at the back thing, and which might go to the speakers, okay. or it might go to another. So you're talking specifically about an amplifier system. A, an amplifier system, but any syst any system like any hi-fi stereo system, a Walkman, all that sort of stuff. They've all got inputs. They do something with the sound, mm -hmm. they amplify it, and they get an output. All of them have got that. So, so it sounds like across both, it seems like breaking it down into the individual segments of the piece are how you mentally process it. So you yes. Of, and that's yes. really essential to being able to understand. Yes, it is. Otherwise, that you find just, if you don't have that good overview of what, of how an, uh, what an audio appliance is doing and what mm. it's capable of mm. and what the pieces are in the audio appliance, it's you are you're all at sea when you're trying to do fault finding because you're you, when you're looking at something you're not sure where that appears in the audio chain uh, and so mm. um, well specifically I mean I would always think about it as a I, and actually often write a checklist 
and tick these things off. Yeah. You know, once you, if you're going through an, like a, an amplifier, that exactly like Andre said, I actually go through and I tick, you know, I start with the power supply and then I go to the transformer. Oh, on the power then, supply. Uh, of course. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you start, Always power supply you start with that point, you, you can follow the cable through. It's a bit more complicated, but basically ticking those things off. Because if you don't know, you know, if you get to the end and you go, yeah, okay, the speakers aren't working, you don't know if it's the speakers or the amplifier or the preamps or blah, 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 blah. So you have to basically build yes. up. You do, yeah. Okay. Um, really quickly, Andre's audio corner, or what's it? Is it Andre's maintenance corner? I think it's corner. Andre's cable, cable corner. corner. Really quickly, um, I had a realization one day at home when I was going through all my cables. Mm. I had a realization that do I really know what's in here in my cables? So these are audio cables. This is like a guitar lead or something like that. Um, there was somebody at the window with a dog. Hello, and I undid all of my cables mm -hmm. here to take a look there's two connections here there's one in the middle and there's like an earth around the outside mm -hmm. and I undid them and I found about of the 30 or so cables that I undid I found about five of them that were either that had bad connections really or were almost about to break and so I went through all my audio cables and refashioned them and refashioned them all lovingly um, with, uh, this is an XLR cable, this has got three connections in it. I'm just going to show this one here because these are fascinating, these ones. And no, that's does not going to come out. What, what oh, you're talking this. about, does this, how does this relate to... Um, uh, so, so this is part of the audio chain. You're always thinking in terms of the audio has to get through here. I think peop what people will probably be most familiar with is maybe even just speaker cable. Speaker cable, yeah. And and hearing a buzz or a hum or a grip. What, what's the time now? Oh, it's 11.50. We've only got 10 minutes left. Yeah, actually, got six minutes. Oh, <laughs> audio cables. If you hear a hum, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh stunning that's amazing oh man yeah, if it hums it's wrong it that wasn't much noise. noise cable corner it's okay we'll give you so much more time yeah i guess so now or do we cancel it you vote <laughs> <laughs> no don't cancel the rose cable corner i wanted to bring this back to um two weeks ago when we were speaking about maintenance mm -hmm. um and you believe in the mantra that if you if you employ good maintenance, your faults will be less. Yeah, absolutely. You're and you're also more that. likely to be able to find them quickly because most of these things that we pointed out were not actually problems yet, but they're really good symptoms of what might become a problem. So stuff like those those the colourful cable or maybe seeing corrosion on some of your points, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff is might not be causing a problem yet, but it will. So in terms of, I guess, maintenance, that's exactly, you just keep keep on, yeah. on top yeah. of the stuff like that. And what we haven't gone through much today as well, we've gone through a lot of um, things that are plugged into the mains. What we haven't gone through a lot today is like in a lot of appliances. Low voltage. Is, yeah, low voltage. So last week we went through and we showed, and we showed something like this. I'm just gonna be very quick here because we don't have much time. And a lot of the problems can occur on these PC boards. You get a dust build up, you get moisture coming in here. I'm so aware that I'm opening Pandora's box, but this does have a mains, a high voltage. I know, I know. And so you shouldn't open this up, but we do <laughs> because we know what we're doing. But this has a high voltage and then it converts it in here. Here's the power converter to power supply. High voltage comes in, converts it to a low voltage. Mm -hmm. All of this operates on low voltage. You can't get zapped by anything here. You can only get zapped by up to around about here on this board here. And, and, because, and because you can do that, you don't plug this in if you've got this open mm -hmm. at home. Why, which is why it's not plugged in. Yeah, which is why yeah. it's not plugged anyway. in. Anyway. So we haven't spoken about fault finding on these guys, but that's a whole nother kettle of fish. Well, that that's, is just that's the thing I think we keep finding is that there are, there are so many branching parts of this stuff and we'll try and, we'll try and follow as much of it through as we can. Um, we'll also try and do some more specific stuff. Um, obviously, I want everyone to be tuning in next week because we're moving back to woodwork. 
Uh, we're going to be doing tool sharpening. Yes. Either tool sharpening or finishing, but we are leaning we'll, towards sharpening. Will it be Luke and yourself? Cool. It sure. will probably be Luke and myself. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. I really enjoyed last week. We had lots of people watching as well. Yeah. It was really good. Um, it's good to see Shane's face on the camera instead of sitting here being the sound engineer behind the camera. What, um, what do you guys want to do next? Look, there is there is probably three or four things which I, we found this week which we could probably which we could probably do turn, yeah turn yes. into a whole hour. I would say maybe low voltage stuff. I would say maybe looking at batteries. Yeah. I mean, if we want to continue a bit of a fault finding thing because there's so much more. Uh, multimeters and and audio and oh, there's so many things. We uh, you know what? I don't think we can confirm it right now. What we're going to do right now, we have to have a real a real talk about yeah. it. And if anyone's got any ideas out there as yeah. well, yeah, that'd be please great. say so. Um, um, once again, I come into a topic here that I that we were like, oh, I wonder what we're going to speak about in here, and it branched out into vast areas because everything expands, everything yeah. um, moves into everything else as well. Mm -hmm. Right to repair petition on the on the Bauer uh, website. Mm -hmm. uh, the right to repair is basically a movement that says if you go and buy a, an item, that item should be made, manufactured, uh, and detailed, and maybe. Um, um, and given to you in such a way that you are able to repair it and you don't have to throw it out once there's something wrong with it because we know that, that um, uh, obsolescence is being built into our appliances um, yeah. and, our, and our goods more and more these days um, and it's, you know, you I know think it's they, just, I think they it's put just it in. Rotters! I think it's just making sure that the government keeps manufacturers accountable because at yes. the moment manufacturers kind of do what they want, they tick the right boxes but they're not really looking after the customers, they don't they, I, I think that the main thing that needs to change is that is that uh, manufacturers don't consider their items or their products their responsibility as soon as it's out the door, as soon as it's bought. We need to change that. Yeah. So if you guys believe with the, uh, believe in that, a lot of them say they do, and they've got a service department department yeah, that sort of right. stuff. But that's just a bit of a gloss up. I, you know what? Um, I've worked at the Australian Gas Association before, and we had a standard. It was called AS501, AS601, and the Australian Gas Standard. Imagine writing into the Australian standards mm. instead of, um, of course, it's all very important safety and that sort of stuff, but having standards of usability written into the, stan into the standard itself, to the Australian standard itself, that would be mm. amazing. Um, actually written in the Australian standard. So, right to repair on the website. Bauer.org.au uh, mm -hmm. and go and take a look at that. That's in one of the main the main slides. Um, we've got one-on-one -on -one, uh, private consultations that you can yeah. go and book on on the website as well. Uh, that's only it's a fifteen minute two dollars gold coin donation. You can go and speak to somebody for fifteen minutes about anything you want. Really, it doesn't even have to be electronics. You just want to have a chat with one of our people. You can do that. Um, <laughs> so that's on the website. You can book that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is it? Is it sharp? Um, it's going to be sharpening or, or finishing, depending or on what, finishing. what people are interested in. Okay. We'll probably do both. At some okay, point. that's next week, same time, mm -hmm. um, box same that place, same that time. And I want to add, I want to throw out there if, if people have questions of things like electrical questions or woodworking mm -hmm. questions that, that they want us to address, mm -hmm. send them through throughout any time yes. you think of them. Send them yeah, through please. to us and then yes. we can address please. those. And we can address them like in you know in a fortnight's time or whatever as well. Yeah. That'd be really good. Oh, we'll be sitting here. We'll just sit in this room for two weeks until the next live session. Yes, I can't so like send, send us things. Time. And yes, I've been wearing gum boots. <laughs> because why is that? Um, insulation? Oh my yeah, god! Could yeah. help? Insulation? No, because I yeah, got safety. up. Because I got up late and Shane had to call me to wake me up and so I could come in. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, are we done? We're we are done. We're at time. Thanks, man. That was really good. That was fun. That was beautiful. We'll see you uh, in a fortnight. See you in a fortnight. Bye, everybody. Lots of love.